Welcome to today's uh, first conference with the Iowa Hawkeyes. And we're joined by Luca Garza, Jordan Bohannon, and Joe Wieskamp. And we will take your questions. Remember, please, that you help everybody if you uh, track down your microphone, uh, have your question ready. You know, once, once a question is being answered, just get one of our very capable assistants to get your uh, microphone ready for the next question and address your question to the players specifically so that we can uh, electronically keep up with what's going on. Uh, and we'll start with your questions for our Iowa players. Jordan, uh, just in the second half there that we talked yesterday about the shooting, to have that out of the gate, how important is that against a team like Tennessee? Yeah, it's going to be really important, uh, especially how they play. Um, another team that uh, different, unique style they play. Um, really run the court, um, so we're going to be ready for that. But for us to get going, we're going to need to make our shots to start the game. I think that was big for Cincinnati to start their game last night against us. Uh, we weren't hitting shots. They got up on a, a big run. Um, and it, it really took everything within us to get back into that game. So uh, it will make the game a lot easier if we're able to get out there right from the start and hit some shots for sure. Go ahead. Jordan, just to follow up on that, you said Tennessee plays a unique style. What about it is unique? I mean, what, what, what makes them different? Well, they definitely have a lot of NBA players potentially on their team, so that's definitely unique in, within its own right. Um, and uh, playing an SEC team, I'm not, I don't think we've played an SEC team yet um, since we've been here, so um, we just got to, they know it's a, it's a tough conference to play in just as well as the Big Ten, so um, they've been battling all year round um, as well as we have. So. We know it's going to be a physical game. Um, they play physical kind of basketball like we do. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. We're looking forward to it. Joe, is it harder or easier in your mind to prepare for a team when you don't have as much time to prepare as you did for game one? I think it's a little bit harder, obviously. But I think our coaching staff has done a great job of trying to get us prepared for this. Um, in the Big Ten season, towards the end of the, end of the year, each team has each other figured out. Um, they have each other locked into personnel, so it's a little bit harder in the end of the Big Ten season. So um, it'll be nice to play another team from a different conference. Luca, that kind of uh, struck me what Jordan said about not playing a, an SEC team. Uh, does, it, does it make a, a difference uh, for something you're familiar with, or do you like the challenge of seeing totally new systems? Um, uh, I don't know. I think both teams, you know, in, in both leagues have very hard schedules. And uh, you know each game in the SEC is, is a battle, as well as the, the Big Ten. So I think both, both teams are really well um, you know, prepared for this in terms of all the battles we've been through uh, throughout the course of the season. And uh, like Joe said, it's, just, it's nice to play teams from other conferences, because at this point, you know, the Big Ten knows each other so well. Uh, <laughs> you know, they know what your tendencies are, even more so than a new team could pick up uh, so quickly. Joey, just talked about the battles. You've had some couple weekends now in tournament play. They have as well. What do you expect the battle to be like tomorrow with the Sweet 16 on the line? Yeah, they're obviously a very strong team. Um, we're ranked number one in the country at one point. So um, this is what you sign up for when you play, when you sign up to play a Division One basketball. And this is the type of team that you want to play. Uh, so we're just excited for the test. Luca, you're going against another physical opponent. The inside out game that you have, how? in past when you go up against physical teams. How does that just kind of open things up for you guys? Um, I think, you know, uh, you know, I'm a player who just kind of sees what the defense has given me. You know, when they're really aggressive on my post-ups, and I, I tend to go a little bit more outside, try to open it up. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my best to try to, you know, create some space on the floor uh, for our other guys to drive and, and different stuff like that. So, you know, I'm just going to take what the defense gives me. And I think that's some of our whole, you know, offense does. Everybody, you know, they just take what the defense gives us. Yeah, I had one for Luca too. Just wondering your impressions of Kyle Alexander from what you've been able to see, and I guess how important it would be. He's a guy who has had foul trouble at times to try to, you know, get him some early fouls. Yeah, I mean, they're they're a different team when he's not on the court. You know, you can see that when you you watch some of their games. You know, he's really athletic, uh, long, can really affect shots around the rim, and um, you know, he's. Um, you know, when we go into games, you know, we, we have a goal to get their bigs in foul trouble. So I think that, you know, that remains the same with him and Williams this game. Jordan, have you been taken by the Big Ten's success, or is that something you ex expected as they hit it into the tournament? 
I mean, I think we all expected it, every single player in the Big Ten. Um, I mean, we went through quite the battle on a night-to-night -night basis uh, this past few months. And for us to go to a 20-game schedule, it made it even more difficult. Um, so we're not surprised at all that the Big Ten started 7-1. to um, I thought we've had really good matchups with teams. And um, quite honestly, I wasn't surprised any team won, or was surprised any team uh, won, obviously. But uh, I think looking forward, uh, I see more teams advancing in, the, in this tournament. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if we get the same amount into the Sweet 16 as well. You mentioned matchups. I always think that's interesting uh, as you approach a game. Are there teams that you think specifically you match up better because of what they do or don't do? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's difficult in the, in the NCAA tournament because you only have a couple days to prepare. But um, you look at it, it all comes down to matchups in most games. And um, that's the beauty of the NCAA tournament. You don't have a lot of time to, be, to prepare for it. But um, you got to take what's there during the game. And you got to realize what matchups happen. And, um, uh, that's something you have to definitely take advantage of. Jordan, Tennessee's given up 15 threes to each of their last two opponents. As a guy who can kind of get it going, does that excite you? And also, how do you guys kind of avoid falling into the trap of getting trigger happy against them? Yeah, um, obviously, I, I love to shoot threes. Um, that's, that's one, every time I step foot on the floor, I'm trying to shoot as much as I can. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Hopefully, I can get a lot of threes off. And um, I know Joe's looking forward to it as well. Luke is too. And, um, that's the beauty of our team, though. We have a lot of shooters on this team. Um, and a lot of times, we have five shooters out there. So it's really difficult for teams to play us. Um, and Luke can go inside out. Um, Tyler is one of the most dominant inside players, I think, in the NCAA tournament. Um, so we have, we have a really tough team to guard. Um, but we also we know what we're capable of on defense as well. So um, it's going to come down to getting stops in important times tomorrow. Joe, is there something you've seen from Tennessee as to why they've given up so many seemingly good looks from the perimeter lately? Not necessarily. Um, obviously, we haven't had a whole lot of time to prepare for them. We'll probably be watching a lot of film of them today and kind of figure those different things out, see where we can attack them offensively. Um, I think our coaching staff will be able to give us kind of a game plan um, how to attack that. Anybody else? Terrific job, guys. Thanks very much. Good luck tomorrow. Coach McCaffrey will be here in a couple of minutes. Thank you.
at length. You know, I mean, I told him that, uh, you know, anytime he wanted, you guys want to go to a game or something, let me know. That's very good. This is it. I mean, <laughs> it's coming up, though. Coach McCaffrey, uh, nice enough to join us. And again, if you just uh, try and have your questions ready to go so that we can keep the pace moving and get everybody's job done. First question. I'll just ask this, Coach. I just, I just ask you, how difficult is it to, uh, to get enough sleep during a, a time like this, a short turnaround? You're not going to get a lot of sleep, but you've got to get some because you've got to be fresh. Uh, you know, you, you just jump from one game to the next. Uh, obviously, the assistant coach responsible for that team has been studying them for quite some time. So we just, you know, we were up late last night, but got a little bit of sleep back up this morning, had, had a meeting breakfast and then came over here and had a at a live practice which is good get up and down get, you know get a little sweat going have a few more meetings and then uh, get ready to play yeah Fran as you look at Tennessee how much of a difference do you think Kyle Alexander makes for them when he's on the floor and able to stay out of foul trouble they, they, they have great versatility and obviously he provides you know something different with his length and his size, uh, you know, but they can also downshift, go small, and, and put, put some big time weapons out there offensively. Uh, you know, you look at matchups in particular, I think that's maybe what you're also thinking about when you look at our big guys versus their big guys. You know, here, here's a 6'11 guy with length and, and the ability to defend, you know, our scoring post players. But, it, it, you know, it'll be a constant uh, situation where we're, we're, we're both pushing different buttons with different lineups and looking for different things. Coach, when you come off a half shooting 65% like you did in the second, having another game, you know, two days later on that short rest, does it make it easier to kind of ride the confidence for your shooters? Well, I hope so. Uh, you know, uh, we, we've had an interesting season in that respect. You know, there's times when our offense has really been clicking, and there's times when we've been off. You know, we, the last game we played before yesterday, we shot one for 16 from three, and uh, then yesterday we make 11. You know, I look at our team and say we've got, we've got good three-point shooters. But I think you have to be able to establish that you can throw it inside and score, drive and kick, drive and finish, drive, get to the free throw line, throw it inside, get to the free throw line. Over the course of your entire body of work, you've got to be able to do all those things. To beat a team that's won 30 games, you better be able to do all those things or at least attempt to do all those things uh, to beat them. Fran, uh, off of that, Tennessee has allowed 15 threes in each of their last two games. As a coach, how do you kind of balance taking advantage of that while also trying to avoid guys settling for too many shots? I, I think that's, that's something I th you probably deal with every game, you know, especially when you have multiple three-point shooters like we do. At what point do you settle? At what point do you work the ball? And you're hoping every game that your guys truly understand the difference as it relates to time and score. Uh, what defense are they in? I think Colgate's a, a team that probably shoots a lot of threes anyway, and so are we. But we also have, have won a number of games where we just, we just hammer that thing inside. So uh, we just hope that our guys make the proper decisions, and uh, you want them to be confident. Coach Jordan said that he feels like Tennessee is different stylistically than any team you faced this year. Do you agree with that? And how have all the teams you faced this year prepared you to face that? Well, I think in the Big Ten, every team has a great coach. Every team has really talented players, three or four of whom expect to play in the NBA. Uh, I would say the same for the SEC. So uh, the difference, I, I think, when you look at Tennessee, they've got tremendous team speed. They're quick, uh, but they also can throw the ball inside. Uh, they also have three-point shooting. That's why they have the record that they have. But uh, 
you know, we feel like when you look at Michigan State versus Maryland versus Penn State versus Nebraska, I mean, you go right on through our league, what it does is prepare you for different styles. Some teams play man, some teams play it, we'll put, mix it a little bit more. Some teams are a little more deliberate, some teams play faster. The one thing about Tennessee is, you know, they, they can they can go either way. They they can go fast. I mean, you look at the Auburn game and the, the championship game, and that was that was as, as up and down and athletic a game as as I've seen in a long time. But they can also play half court. Uh, they're, they've got a great coach, and uh, they've got intelligent players that share the ball. I think it's one of the things that's impressed me most about them. They have really good players with big reputations, but everybody seems to put winning above everything else and move the ball. And that's why they're still playing. I know this is an old story for people who, that follow you every day, but for those of us who are new to Iowa, how do you uh, deal with a, a player who's also playing another varsity sport at the same time? Well, it's a little bit different because, you know, it's my son and, you know, obviously you're hoping that he can maximize his opportunity. You would want the same for anybody else. Uh, Coach Heller and I made have an agreement that we're going to work together and do what makes sense. Uh, so we had a window of time after the Big Ten tournament ended where he could play in some games, which he did, and did really well. And then we had it set up. You know, had we lost yesterday, he'd be playing today in a doubleheader at Indiana. Is it too much? I don't think so. It's what he's always done. He's always gone from one sport to the other. Uh, he's thrilled to have the opportunity to play for our baseball team, has tremendous respect for Coach Heller and his teammates. He grew up playing baseball with a good number of those guys, uh, either played with them or against them. And you know, I think as long as we can manage it, while at the same time uh, managing the academic side of it, he's an academic all Big Ten. so. He's handling that part of it. We'll keep doing it that way. It kind of brings up one of the quandaries that parents have as their kids grow up. And so many times you'll have even high school coaches that want them to specialize. I think I know what your belief is on this after that answer, but uh, what, what, do you, what do you think non-son uh, would do as he grows up and whether he can play two, three, four sports? It's interesting because you're so right. When, when you look at a lot, a lot of high school coaches just don't, won't allow it anymore. And uh, when we came to Iowa, we met with the folks at Iowa City West High School to make sure that the coaches were willing to work together because we felt like he, mm -hmm. this was something he was going to want to do. And it's a place where they, they welcome that. And, and we appreciated that. And I honestly think it helps you tremendously to continuously be competing mm -hmm. from one sport to the other. You know, there's nothing like having to get in that batter's box and have to hit something coming 95 miles an hour. Uh, and I think by the same token, you know, Connor's got to hit a big three yesterday and make an inbounds play to Luca Garza know at the exact time for him to hit a three. You're competing under pressure. And uh, I think it develops you in, in so many different ways. So I encourage it. I, you know, I like two sport athletes because what you know is you, you're getting is, is a competitor. Big stage is a big stage. Exactly, exactly right. Go ahead. Uh, Fran, you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but you know, between Tennessee and yourself, two of the best teams in terms of offensive efficiency in the nation, how comfortable are you getting into a, a shootout, so to speak, with the Vols tomorrow? We're typically very comfortable getting into a shootout. Obviously, as any game goes on, adjustments are required. If you feel like you're losing the shootout at some point, I think you might have to slow it down. I think you have to be smart enough to recognize, all right, let's work the ball a little bit more. Uh, let's maybe try to shoot a few less threes and go inside a little bit more. Uh, let's put it on the deck and see if we can get to the free throw line a little bit more because we want to press. You know, if you get to the free throw line, you can get into your press a little bit easier. So uh, normally I would say if, if the game can be in the 90s, we, we'd be happy about that. Uh, but sometimes you've got to be careful, especially when you're playing a team of this caliber. Everybody good? Go ahead. 
Fran, it's been 20 years since Iowa got to the Sweet 16. What would it just mean for the program to get past this hurdle tomorrow? Oh, it would be tremendous. You know, we've come close. Uh, we all know how hard it is. I don't care where you are. It's very difficult to put it all together and, and get into the tournament and then advance once you get here. So I think our players all recognize the situation we're in and we would really love to have this experience for each other, but also for our fan base. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck tomorrow.